Trip and Ingalls present Lola's Antenna Upgrades, brought to you by RVBuiltFor2.com. This is part three of Lola's Antenna Upgrade. These are the steps that we followed to install the Wi-Fi Ranger and the WeBoost Antenna. For details on how we got started, see parts one and part two. Previously, in part one, we covered the King Dome satellite removal. And then in part two, we covered the antenna installation, we ran cables, and we finished up sealing the roof. For this last part, we are going to cover the installation of the inside components for the Wi-Fi Ranger and the WeBoost cell phone booster. This project involves upgrading our communications for Lola. Uh, we've been testing over the past couple of months uh, a couple of devices that uh, have improved our connectivity, being able to keep in touch with the grandkids and post uh, photos and videos and stuff on the blog. First of all is the Wi-Fi Ranger Go 2. That device allows us to uh, connect to campground Wi-Fi and gives us a, since the satellite is outside on top of the roof, it gives us a greater range and better signal strength in the Wi-Fi connection. Another advantage of the Wi-Fi Ranger is that it is a single connection uh, to the campground Wi-Fi, so in some cases we've seen that um, when we connect uh, to uh, Wi-Fi, campground Wi-Fi, and we pay for it, if depending on what level of service we get, get uh, we either get one connection or three connections, so sometimes it's limited to that. The Wi-Fi Ranger allows all of our devices to connect inside the RV with a single connection going out to the campground Wi-Fi. So there's a couple of advantages to the, the Wi-Fi Ranger. Extended range and a single connection. The second thing we're going to do is install the, uh, the WeBoost cell phone uh, cellular booster. And that allows our MiFi and our phones to be able to connect, get a couple extra bars of uh, connectivity. And uh, sometimes it's enough to go from 3G to 4G. Um, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's been a good device to have when we didn't have the, well, for voice communication. And then also we use that as a backup in our, with our data plan if we don't have Wi-Fi connection. For the electrical connection for all this, we've got an adapter we hope to use. Uh, it has a 12 volt connection there, along with a couple of USB uh, charger points so we can plug in our MiFi, for example. So we hope to connect that to the existing wiring electrical that is going to the satellite connection. Uh, in order to do the electrical connection, we've got a voltmeter, we've got some connectors and some electrical tape. To run the cable, I uh, hope to use some nylon string, nylon cord, polyester cord, to be able to use the existing cable run that goes from the satellite uh, box, the satellite controller that's inside the RV, out to the satellite. All right, I'll explain what I did here on the inside of the RV. There was a, a junction box right here, and I replaced that with a, a 110 receptacle. That way, the Wi-Fi Ranger can be hooked up to 110 power. Uh, I don't expect that we're going to be needing to do uh, use the Wi-Fi Ranger very much when we are completely boondocking, because there probably won't be any Wi-Fi access. Uh, we can run off of the batteries for quite a long time using the inverter. So if we need it for a few hours, we can do that. Uh, if we I can also check with the um, Wi-Fi Ranger folks to see if they have a 12 volt adapter. Right now it takes about um, 24, so there's the the receptacle that I put in there, and it takes 24 volts to uh, run the Wi-Fi Ranger. Secondly, I identified a, uh, a cable that is 12 volts, and um, this one here, and that was going to the satellite dish controller box. I had to trace, pull one of the cables out there. Uh, tie that in with a connector 
and that goes into the 12 volt connector box that we've got uh, in the front and I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, one side goes to a regular 12 volt connector and the other is a dual USB. So got that all wired in, the 12 volt and the 110 volt. All the extra cables I uh, we left out there. This is the, uh, the cable from the Wi-Fi Ranger going up to the antenna that we pulled through. And then this cable here is for the WeBoost antenna that we put up on the roof. And then this here is the uh, power jack for the Wi-Fi Ranger that plugs in to the receptacle that we added here. So that's the installation that we did. All the loose wires we went ahead and pushed back there. Some of the uh, uh, wires that were from the satellite we couldn't pull loose so we just uh, pushed it back into the around the corner there. So with the access patch buttoned up with the four screws what we have is a regular 12 volt connector here and then a USB charger right here. We've got our cables here for our Wi-Fi Ranger. So we can take the Wi-Fi Ranger and plug that in in the jack that has the power over Ethernet and then take the power connector. Now what I'll probably do is put some Velcro and mount it up here along the back but I haven't decided exactly where to mount it so right now I'm just gonna set it down but you can see that it's got power and uh, right now we're not connected to anything so we don't have any green lights but it's uh, it's fully functional and the extra wires can be just, uh, pushed back in through here now for the we boost we plug in the outside antenna that we routed into the we boost we have the inside antenna on a, a cable here, and I haven't decided exactly where to route that yet, but we'll get around to that. And then we'll take the 12 volt connector and plug it, plug in the Weboost. Okay, and then turn it on, and we have all the lights are lit. So we are hit, we are connected to the uh, cell phone network we got uh, all all bands receiving here and all we have to do is uh, figure out where to put the indoor antenna uh, for the best reception for the cell phone uh, this stuff will tidy it up make sure you know that get the cables wrapped up and um, and put away so that we've got a nice clean installation uh, once we get uh, get this finished up here all right, the last thing to show you is why I wanted to put a USB connector here. Uh, we have a um, MiFi from AT&T, our current service provider, and it can be put any place in the RV as far as the reception is concerned. However, uh, to for charging, I thought it might be convenient to have everything up in the same corner. And so using this USB receptacle, we can plug anything that needs USB power and have it, uh, have it charged right up here in the same corner. I could also, in theory, uh, mount this in, in Velcro and have it permanently mounted uh, up here. I'm not certain how it whether it will interfere with a Wi-Fi Ranger or whether they will interfere with each other, uh, so I'll have to do some testing on that, but at least it gives us the option to have a fair amount of our uh, communication gear all in the same corner. This concludes the three-part Harmony Lola's Antenna Upgrade. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and for more information, see the Trippin' Ingles at rvbuiltfor2.com.